and happy 2021. Feels like we're off to a great start. I know we are. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I shall be your host as we journey to take your health back. We are coming to you live from my home in Makiki and from the studios of Think Tech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu. Think Tech Hawaii showcases very diverse topics with very colorful show hosts. We welcome you to join us daily as Jay Fidel, our boss, makes sure that we have high quality content to share with you. Well, last year, I had the honor of meeting this unique young man who is visiting Hawaii from Ohio. I invited him to join us today as he's very passionate about many things that are of interest to me, like my cardiac health, my oral hygiene, and my nutrition. His name is Henry Lee, and he works in a clinic in Ohio called the Heart Attack and Stroke Pre Prevention Center and Complete Health Dentistry. The title of our show today is How to Live a Long and How to Live Long and Die Short. Six World's Best Doctors Right in Your Own Home. Today we shall be discussing how do we want to shift our mindset from sick care and treating disease to self-care and preventing it from before it happens. What I would like you to take away from today's talk is to adopt six, six simple daily lifestyle changes that will optimize your living and minimize your dying. Wow. I'd like to introduce to you my newfound friend and lifesaver, or should I say lives saver, Henry Lee. Aloha and welcome, Henry. Aloha. Thank you for that kind of introduction, Wendy. Excited yeah, to be well, here. I, I was just so impressed when I met you. It was only last year, a short time, but in that short time where you were visiting Hawaii, we spent a lot of quality hours together and we welcomed in the new year as well as uh, you took me to your work office at Magic Island at Ala Moana Park and um, I think we put some really good thoughts together to help save this world. So let's get started Henry. I know okay. like me, you, um, I wear many hats and I know you do too. So can you share with us a few of those? Yeah, certainly. Thank you. Thanks for asking. So as you can see in some of these pictures here, um, as Wendy had introduced, um, I wear many hats, some at the Heart Attack and Stroke Prevention Center of Central Ohio. So I'm actually currently here in Ohio. Uh, that's the top left hand corner there. It's a partnership between medicine and dentistry because it's one of the very few places on the entire planet that has a cardiologist and a dentist under the same roof. Um, and we look at preventative measures, namely healthy lifestyles, and you're going to hear about the six pillars uh, that we emphasize. We heavily base it on nutrition um, and uh, trying to combat the diseases and the root causes before they actually happen. And we have a couple uh, slides that we'll be showing you later. At the bottom on the left, as Wendy said, um, I had the pleasure of meeting her in person about a month ago. <laughs> Yay! So that was super fun. And uh, I do emotional intelligence coaching. Um, I do a, a few ministries um, with youth and singles um, around the area. And uh, I partner with another company called Juice Plus, uh, which is a, a nutritional, healthy lifestyle company. Wow, there's so many hats you wear. And I know I'm going to have to invite you back because I want to share more with uh, all the rest about the intelligence coaching. And I hear that that's kind of like the new buzzword right now for people who are at home to get help and um, assistance going and getting through what we're going through um, as we get through this COVID situation. So if you don't mind, that was, uh, if you didn't catch it, that's the invitation to come back again. All right? Just, just go yes. I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you've shared with me that you know and uh, you've heard Jeff Olson speak and Jeff Olson is a USA Alpine skier. He is one of your heroes. I know that because he's one of my heroes too. I tell you, I when I met him, I see the way he has uh, used his training and all his skills in his life and how he raised his family, his beautiful daughters, and how they live in Colorado and share his passion for the joy of, of coaching. Um, of course, who could not admire Jeff Olson? So I know that he describes life as a game. Can you explain that analogy to us, Henry? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is one of his, his phrases that he uses, especially being an athlete. Um, but you don't have to be an athlete um, in order to understand that life is a game. Um, you can see in several of these pictures, whether you're looking at endurance on the top left or on the cycling or on weight training and strength, uh, whether you're looking at weight management or weight loss or weight gain. Pregnancy is a big component of that. Um, and just making sure that you are sustaining your lifestyle from start to finish. So you can see there's some pictures here of communities um, of a little uh, older folks um, who are you know, conversing and having that community and, um, and that socialization. Flexibility is a piece of that too. And anything that you do in life is either going to be moving you forward or backwards. And it's up to us to make those decisions. Wow. And so we should wake up in the morning and just say, say to ourselves, do we want to go forward in life or do we want to go backwards? And make that affirmation, I want to go forward today. And then direct yourself in that direction. And that's how we should start our days every day because what I mean, who wants to go backwards, right? Who wants that? So we have to direct ourselves because sometimes subconsciously we might not program ourselves that way and we might go backwards. And sometimes I think, um, you know, during this lockdown, Henry, honestly, I've had days that I've gone backwards where, I mean, I just sat on my desk and just took the time to be still. So most people would call that going backwards. But I just say I took the time to be still and took more mm -hmm. time to figure out what direction I want to go. Is that correct? That's super healthy. And mm -hmm. keeping in mind that it's not a matter of what's good or bad. Those are very opinionated and subject, subject right? right? But it's asking yourself, is it supportive or not supportive? It's, if it's supportive for you to slow down and take a breath to meditate, mm -hmm. then it's supportive. Yes, right. It's what it is for the moment. And you're absolutely right. I love that. You're such a young man and you have all this wisdom. That's why I could spend hours just hanging out with you. So again, in your young, youthful age here on earth, how would you grade the overall health of the world we live in today? Well, that's a great question, Wendy. And, uh, you know, this, I chose this slide to show you because um, back in the day, you know, healthy living used to be really simple. You know, we had uh, the ability to grow your food in your backyard, you had gardens, it was go outside and play. It was, you know, grab something to drink. You would go out and grab from the, grab a drink from the hose. Yay, um, we did that. Like, and I still, I would still do that. Nothing wrong with that. And life wasn't as busy, but you can see in some of those pictures there that, um, you know, we've resorted to a, such a busy lifestyle that we have to resort to what I know now, or I call now as the three food groups that I grew up on, it's processed foods, um, refined foods, and fast foods. And oftentimes we resort to those because they're easy, they're convenient, and quite frankly, they're kind of cheap. So I, I would say we have gone backwards. We are one of the richest countries in the world and one of the most unhealthy as well. Wow. Every time someone says fast food, I just think of an apple. I think that's God's best fast food. I mean, and you know, like we're on the run, I grab an apple. If I got to get in the car, I wash my apple. If I'm not lazy, I'll cut it. Okay, so it's not as fast. But the faster food is grab that apple, wash it down, put it in a napkin, get in your car and go. And I just crunch and eat and crunch and eat. So to me, that's fast food. <laughs> but people don't see it that way. And so I think we have a lot of educating to do. Uh, do you agree with me on that, Henry? Oh, absolutely. I, I think often, I'm glad you brought up that point because our idea is constructed over what we grew up from the past. And we oftentimes associate fast food with, um, am I allowed to say like McDonald's and Burger King on this? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, I'm, for sure. I, I love those too. Um, but you're right. There's alternatives out there that are that exist is just changing our mindset into what fast food really means there it there exists healthy fast food and in fact the 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 beauty of this is the technology that we have today 
actually has the capability not only to produce unhealthy fast food, but healthy fast food as well. Mm -hmm. And it's just our responsibility to find that. Right. And it's our, our jobs, Henry, as, um, as health coaches and health educators. I mean, my breakfast for the last nine years is a kale smoothie. And I've timed it. It takes me six minutes to actually harvest my kale, which I grow in my tower gardens. I harvest my kale. I blend it with some blueberries, uh, one of our powder mixes with ice. And I don't use dairy. And I pop that into the blender. And in six minutes, I have it in my cup. And I'm either at my desk at work or I'm going in the car on the road with my breakfast in hand full of nutrients, vitamins, minerals, and I'm just a happy camper. I don't have to think, do I want my eggs over easy or scrambled? I just have my smoothie every morning and it takes the worry out of what am I going to eat for breakfast? So there's so much we can do, Henry, and it's just our job right now is to educate people that there are such healthy alternatives like you mentioned. So what can we all do to be healthier, Henry? I mean, I'm learning and I'm hoping I learn a few more tips from you. Well, that's exactly why you're watching today, right? Um, so those of you who are tuning in from wherever you are in the world, um, you saw the title of this was The Six Best Doctors in Your Own Home. And so I want to start with the graphic on the left here because that goes right along with what you and I were talking about before with the whatever you whatever decisions you're making, whether it's eating or drinking or watching or reading, it's either moving you forward or backward. It's either feeding disease or it's helping you to fight it. And so a couple of the uh, six best doctors in the world or six pillars or whatever you want to call them um, in no particular order of priority, um, but I'm going to go in a sequence that is hopefully going to help you remember these in a narrative format. If you imagine going back to the first time that you got CPR trained, right? Fresh air, air is what your, all, all of your cells need. It's one of the, 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 the two vitals that your cells need in order to survive. And so if you are taking the time to make sure you're delivering that air to your cells, um, then you are you just explode with life and the fact is that our lung capacity um, is about six times that of what we normally breathe in on a regular basis so being intentional about breathing the next one here is exercise exercise is movement moving that air to your extremities and the nutrients because it doesn't do any good if it's just in your lungs um, and that helps with cardiovascular health. And that's one of the things we emphasize at the Heart Attack and Stroke Prevention Center. Um, hydration helps to flush, to flush all the toxins out and every single chemical reaction in the body occurs in the presence of water. And, but in order to heal your body, on the bottom left there, rest and sleep and making sure that you're giving your time, your body ample time to repair. But that also requires that you have the tools and the, the ingredients floating around in your blood and surrounding your tissues to heal while you are resting. And so that's the good diet down at the bottom. And lastly, but not least, oftentimes it is ignored that sunshine is super important. And, and you guys get this all the time in Hawaii. I'm super jealous right now because it's snowy out here. <laughs> But that sunshine helps with your immune system. It helps with vitamin D, converts the cholesterol on your skin to that. And um, it, so it controls your mood. It has the foundation for um, absorption of all sorts of different other minerals into your, in your tissues. So those are the six sort of simple mindsets that you can adopt. And we're going to go through a couple examples of those uh, in the next few slides. But um, throughout the next, what, 15 minutes, I want you to be thinking about where do I stand in each of those pillars? Which one of those can I make a promise to myself that I am not going to be stuck in the same spot that I am at the beginning of 2021? I'm going wow. to level up on <laughs> each one of those and where do I start? Well, so I'm ahead of you because as you were talking, I took all my notes down. Okay, and I wanted to see where I stood. And I didn't even know you were going to ask me that, but you know, I'm just that kind of a person. But out of the six, I know I get lots of fresh air. I got lots of movement, um, hydration. And that's why I carry my Hydro Flask. I make sure I drink enough. 
I'm going to skip one. I go to good diet. I'm since retired. I'm on a plant strong diet and I have worked on it. And that's why I start my day off with kale smoothies. And, you know, I get lots of sunshine. I surf as often as I can. I'm in that good, beautiful Pacific Ocean with the sun on my back, with the ocean, the salt water on my in my feet. And along with the walking on the sand without slippers or shoes on the rest part. OK, so that's one thing I had to work on. And I'm going to say mahalo to COVID, but because of COVID, I have now time to rest more. And so everyone always says, when do you need to sleep more? And so I usually average about four hours of sleep a day. And everyone says, that's not enough. So I can honestly say that now I get about five, almost sometimes six, but on a good day, I get five and going on six. So I'm excited about that. And that's one thing I will say, Mahalo to being stuck at home is because I, I turned the lights off a little bit more earlier now. So are you proud of me, Henry? <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm glad that you had written all those down. And you're right. Sleeping is one of those one of those areas that I get to improve on too. But yeah, <laughs> I'm proud of you for at least getting five to six. Yeah, the, well, I'm, I'm going to have right now more. because I'm getting there with sleep. And so it's in all due time. I'm not happy about sleeping so much, but I know I need it and it's a good time for me to do it. So let's work on it and start the year off right. Right, Henry? Right, absolutely. <laughs> All righty. So I got to ask you, how does working alongside a cardiologist and a dentist help shift the mindset of your patients from sick care and treating disease to a mindset of self-care and preventing it before it happens? Right. So our cardiologist that we work on site with is Dr. Eric Goulder. Um, he spent 30 years of his career working in uh, sick care is what he calls it, waiting for you to have a heart attack or a stroke and then trying to patch you up. And one of the revelations that he had along with his now wife, our dentist, Dr. McClatchy, um, so it literally is a marriage between medicine and dentistry. Um, wow. Little play on words there. But they follow something called the bail doning method, which is not just looking at the aftermath of disease, but getting down to the root cause. And what you see on here is something called the root cause tree of arterial disease. And it doesn't just refer to arterial disease, it's really the root cause of a bunch of series of chronic diseases. You can, if you can see some of those, I know it's kind of small to read, um, but periodontal disease is highlighted, endodontal and, um, and lifestyle, uh, your sleep apnea, some of those are the dental side. Uh, the other ones refer to genetic testing. We can actually go through and we have certain innovative pieces of technology uh, that are uh, state of the art. Some of them, you can only find like one of these systems in an entire state. I think in the state of Ohio here, um, there's several things that we have at the center that you can't find anywhere else. Uh, but we get to the root cause of inflammation. That's the key, Wendy. Inflammation is the stem of all chronic disease. And when you get that under control, yeah. right, then you can start combating all the oxidative stress that leads to Alzheimer's and dementia and kidney disease, rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes, the list goes on and on. I totally come into agreement with that. Wow. Okay, so before we go further, we have a question from the audience. And he, he wants to know, some of these six doctors seem to be beyond the capability of us as individuals. We rely on our government to help make sure we get clean, uh, clean air and clean water, for example. What do we need most from government to help us as a healthy society? Mm. So one of the things before I dive into specifically answering to each of those six pillars, right, is really it comes from a mind shift, a mind shift inside. Because if we look at ourselves as a result of our environment, we are allowing ourselves to be controlled 
by the limitations that, for instance, in this question, our government is placing on us. But there's always alternatives out there. Mm -hmm. So shifting the mindset into what are the possibilities that we have not yet seen based on our limited perspective and experience? Wendy, you had mentioned before, for instance, let's say nutrition. There's a lot of issues around nutrition um, that we're dealing with today with the global warming or climate change or whatever you want to call it, desertification. Our food has to travel thousands of miles before it gets to our plate through, through transportation, redistribution um, on the shelves, on the grocery store, and then sits on your counter. Um, not only that is we have all sorts of different genetic modification happening. Uh, it's not regulated. There's pesticides and herbicides that are just abusing all of our lands. We're over farming. And so, yes, nutrition is super important. And there's, again, some decisions that we have to make. We come to a crossroads. Do we resort to isolated megadoses of vitamins? And in some cases, that might help if I have a deficiency in vitamin D, for instance, that's helpful. Um, or do we find alternatives in order to bridge the gap of our nutritional needs from actual fruits and vegetables. And so one of the things that uh, there's a company uh, called Juice Plus that has figured out how to dehydrate food at its prime peakness of ripeness. And uh, so it locks in that nutrition and then they can transport that so it doesn't start decaying over time and package it into these capsules so it can deliver a super powerful concentrated punch of real fruits and vegetables that hasn't decayed over thousands of miles, has not been uh, abused with all sorts of pesticides and herbicides. Um, and really it, it gets rid of the need for the volume of water because it's dehydrated. And the problem with all the sugar that's in, involved in having all these fruits and vegetables. And that's particularly important for our like pre-diabetic patients, diabetic patients, or really just anyone in life. Well, so that's just one example. Well, exactly. Our uh, mindset, <laughs> and I think um, like one simple answer to that question would be probably what can we do or what can the government do? It's basically education. It's educating us on what our alternatives, our options are out there and putting it and in us doing our own personal research, as Henry has done, as I have done. And I mean, I'm a tita chick from Miley and I had to learn everything from scratch. And I understand now, uh, 17 years into studying this lifestyle, that I am the one that can control it and the government you know, they're going to do what they're doing. We can't do a whole lot about what their decisions are, except we can govern what we want for our bodies. And I think that's the most important thing is personal accountability and not wait for somebody else to tell us to do this or that. We have to research it in ourselves. So we, we need to move on. And um, <laughs> otherwise, we could spend the whole time on that. And great question. So mahalo for that question. So Henry, what are some of the innovative ways you measure a person's health? and help them uh, prevent diseases before it occurs. So we have a number of innovative tools, and one of those is called a CIMT. It's a carotid artery intima media thickness, where we literally take an ultrasound to your arteries in your neck, both left and right, and we can measure the thickness, which indicates how much soft plaque is actually in your arteries. So we give you an arterial age. And so you might be 35 years old, but you have arteries of a 45 year old person. So we measure that first in order to get a baseline. And then we can uh, give you some simple lifestyle changes to adopt in your daily habits. Very good, wow. So what are some simple tools that you can equip your patients to take back control of their own health? Sure. So we have a number of uh, different um, products. Um, we have a number of different uh, charts and tracking and accountability. Um, but I think this picture shows a very, um, a very good concept to keep in mind when we're choosing those alternatives. 
Um, you know, what if uh, that syringe on the left uh, didn't contain like morphine, right? If I have a headache or something like that, um, or I'm recovering from a, a surgery, what if it actually contained real phytonutrients to get to the root cause of that inflammation again, right? And so we equip them with tools like we mentioned before that Juice Plus, we have Stella Life, it's a homeopathic plant-based uh, healing uh, ointment. Um, it's, you can ingest it too. We've got a number of things like Perio Protect Gel, um, that not only whitens your teeth, but kills the bacteria in your mouth that leaches into your blood and causes heart attacks and strokes and, and diabetes and all that stuff. Um, and so really we look at what are some, uh, what are some ways that we can empower you with food primarily and simple exercises that fit into your lifestyle, um, in order to reduce your chances of that disease starting rather than waiting for it to occur and then having to backtrack. Wow. So I guess what we put in our body matters a whole lot. And like I said, I changed my lifestyle to a plant-based lifestyle. And so that has helped me a lot. So what results have you seen when people like myself adopt a plant-based lifestyle, Henry? Yeah, so this uh, next graphic actually shows um, not a full comprehensive, but a pretty good list of some results that you see. You see that the, the tissues start healing faster because of the nutrients are already surrounding them in the, in the blood and the tissues. You have this durability that you never experienced before. The recovery time um, starts shortening. Inflammation starts going down systemically. Um, you see every system in the body start uh, synergizing because when you are going to homeopathic plant-based uh, fruits and vegetable grains and berries nutrition, then it's not combating a single symptom. It is addressing every body system in the entire organism. Wow. So, you know, Henry, um, when I, everyone says when you turn 40 years old, life changes, your, you know, your arm grows too short, you got to get glasses, all that stuff. So when I was 43 years old, what I did was I prayed. I prayed and I asked God to help me because I needed to get my health in under, uh, under control and start living healthier. So at 43, I made that request of him. So I, I was obedient and I listened. And so that's when I went plant strong from that time. And now I'm 61 years old and I've been 17 years on this lifestyle but how would you recommend our viewers to start taking their health back? Well, Wendy, it starts with making sure you know and you acknowledge and notice where you are today. Mm -hmm. And so these are those six pillars or those six best doctors, right? And so be honest with yourself in evaluating do I eat real food? Do I exercise on a regular basis? Do I get enough sunlight? Sometimes if the answer to that um, you know, is a default to know unless you're intentional about stepping outside for a little bit, even here in Ohio, because it's dreary and snowy and cold. So coming with a baseline, being honest with yourself, measuring that first, getting accountability and being consistent with that. All right. Uh, we have a quick question from the audience, and I think I can answer this one, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. They want to know how much water should a person have uh, daily intake. What I, and, and what I learned, Henry, was um, basically you take your weight and you divide it by two. So if I were 100 pounds divided by two, that means I should have 50 ounces of water or more. And that's the baseline. Is that accurate right. enough? Yes. Yep. That's okay. Because we, we got to move right on because we have like a just under a minute left. So if our viewers viewers want to learn more about how to prevent heart attacks and strokes, to learn more about other ways to optimizing their immune systems, or simply look good, feel great, how do they get in touch with you, Henry? Yeah, sure. Um, you can see my email address is at the top in the center there, um, and my phone number is on the top right. Um, and I can certainly in, put you in touch with um, our Heart Attack and Stroke Prevention Center, our Complete Health Dentistry, um, our Juice Plus Company. Um, there's, the list goes on. Any of those 
uh, different homeopathic products that I mentioned. Um, we can put those in your hands. And if you are looking for a local complete dentist, then we can find one for you and connect you with that resource. Wow. Very good. You're a wealth of knowledge, Henry, and that's why I wanted you on this show. The time is up for now, and I just want to say mahalo and sending you love and sunshine over there in Ohio, and we welcome you back to Hawaii at any time. So mahalo, 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 Henry. Aloha. Mahalo. Thank you, Wendy.